Hi, this is Sharon, and this is Ursula, and we just went to the Eastgate Mall today, and um, we had a very exciting time, as usual. Uh, we walked around, and um, we prayed for a lot of different needs of people, and a lot of it was emotional, you would say? Yeah, a lot of emotional needs, a lot of, um, one guy had a stroke, and we prayed for him, and and there was, uh, but most of it was emotional. And um, we'll just give you some highlights. We met this two fellas that were at a vending area trying to sell these films. And um, I just started to talk to them about the Lord. And, and um, they said they knew the Lord, but you got the feeling that they were backslid. So the more I talked, the more we realized and they were sweet. Weren't they sweet? Uh, very polite. Oh, very polite. They were from, I think they said North Carolina? Yes. And they travel around trying to sell these uh, videos that someone in their family, I think, has made. And so uh, I guess I would have to say that pretty much I address their relationship with the Lord. And I must have talked to them for about half an hour at least. A lot of it was scripture, a lot of it was talking about getting your hearts right, because Jesus is coming again. Yes. And this one young fella, um, he kind of winced when I asked him if, if he was um, walking with the Lord, knew the Lord. He said they were both raised in a church, but um, kind of like that wasn't that important anymore. So, you know, it went on and on and on, I guess, about mostly about the Lord coming back and and then I felt led to tell him that you know the, the Lord says that if you're lukewarm you'd rather have you hot or cold but if you're lukewarm he'll spew you out of his mouth and I said that's not that's not a good thing to be lukewarm I said do you feel like you're on the fence because if you're on the fence you got to get off the fence you know you got to go on one side or the other you're either for God or against God you're in the world or or, or not in the world, you're in the world, but not of the world, you know. So this went on and on for quite a while. And then it, when it was over, it was really over. I knew it was over, and I pretty much was preaching to them for half an hour. And then I said, I think we should pray now, right? Yep. And boy, did we pray. Pray. It's a really Holy Ghost prayer. We raised, we, we uh, joined hands right there, and, then, and they were very willing to do that. And I would say one of them must have been between 14 and 16, and the other guy, I would say at least 20, at least 20. So we all prayed, and then um, the one, the older fellow said, um, I think God gave me a wake-up call today. And I thought, yes, that's exactly why we were sent by to them. And the other kid just said, thank you, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, and we gave them a hug. And they were hugs all around. They were very sweet, right? Oh, they were. I just wish everybody was that sweet when we talked to them. <laughs> but they, they just were a pleasure. They were a pleasure to witness, too. And then we met uh, a man who seemed, like, disoriented. And um, he was sitting on a bench. And he, was, he, he had trouble hearing, right? Yes. Trouble hearing. And we, I felt there was other issues with his brain, you know, that he wasn't really telling us about. But he was eager to talk about the things of God. But he seemed a little confused, right? You want to talk about him a little bit? He seemed very depressed to me. He, he said that he thought that Jesus was mad at him. Mm -hmm. And he, um, I don't think he knew what to do about it. And we talked to him and we talked to him. He had some misconceptions about um, the Lord and Scripture, and and he, he said he didn't think that Jesus ascended. And we showed him Scripture where he did, and and we told him you know that Jesus loves him, and he wants him to be close to him, and uh, we prayed with him, and it was just very sad. There's so many people that are just so depressed. And so upset with the world and what's going on, and they don't think that they have value. They don't think that Jesus really means what He says. And he does. He wants him. He wants people to come to Him. 
So we managed to him as best as we could. Yeah, and there was a, a young girl that I'd led to the Lord last week at work at the subways, and we saw her, and she looked like a different person. She was just lifted up, her countenance was bright, she seemed happy, and she said she felt different. But I said, well, did you go to church yet? And she said, well, my mother goes to church, and she named the church. I said, well, do you go at your mom's church? Well, it's hard for me to get up on Sunday, and I'm just like, get up and go to church. You gotta get up and go to church. That's where you're gonna grow spiritually. So, and your mother will be so happy. I'm sure, you know, she's been praying for you, I'm sure, for a long time. So, um, we, we sigged angels on her, right? Yes, we did. We prayed, Lord, send angels a poker in, the, in, in on Sunday morning, get out of that bed. <laughs> she's gonna get poked. So, I don't mean a Facebook poke either, yeah. So, um, that was her, and then we kept walking, and um, we met um, this man that was in a, uh, you know, motorized scooter, and went over to him and uh, said, what's wrong, you know, why do you need the scooter? And his wife said, well, he had a stroke four years ago, right? Yep, four years ago. So he's having a hard time. He can talk well, pretty well, but he had a hard time with his motor skills, you know, walking, and getting up and down and, and just strength. So we prayed for him and he, and he was so willing, right? Yes, he was. So he willing. Was grateful. He was, he was very, very pliable, very, very uh, humble person. And, and um, so we asked him to try it out and um, he tried his little toes, you know, uh, without getting up. And he goes, no, it feels about the same. So I said, well, can we pray again? So we prayed again. And this time I had his wife lay her hands on him too, but she was she was still she wasn't used to this, you know, you could tell. So me and Sharon prayed for him again, and then um, prayed for his brain cells and everything to be restored to, to send the electrical signals back to his arm and right side, which was affected his body. And we asked him to try it again, and to our amazement, he decides he's going to try to get up, and I didn't ask him to get up. So he put the brakes on the scooter and he and he and he stands up, you know, pretty pretty much standing up, you know. So I said, "Well, is that is that is that unusual for you?" And he said, it, "I feel a little better." He said, "I do feel a little better, you know." So we were going to pray one more time, but his wife said, "Well, we we really don't have the time anymore. We really have to go." And usually I just let them go when they say something like that, but I said to her, "Well, can I ask him if he wants to go?" I said, you know, it's his body. And so she went like that. So I said, can we pray for you one more time? And oh my goodness, he was just like, yes. Right, Sharon? Oh, yeah. He was just like, lay it on this, ladies. Yes. Lay it on us. Lay it on, lay it on me, ladies. And so um, he was just a sweet, sweet spirit. And he, yes, he was he so was. hungry for the, the touch of God. And so we just prayed one more time. And uh, we know when it's over. We know when we're done. And just said to him, you're going to get better and better. The Lord has touched you. And um, just keep thanking the Lord. She gave him a little card, a little bookmark with something about the Lord on it. And um, yeah, scripture verse for him. Memorize. He, he, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. That, what, what does it say in that scripture? It says Matthew 8, 13. I haven't memorized it yet. Okay. <laughs> I was in the middle of that. But it was back go yeah. and... and, and and get on something like that go and get on and praise the Lord something like that it was it was a very encouraging very appropriate scripture for him so um, and we walked around a little bit more and we prayed for a man whose wife was very sick and he asked us and then he did such a wonderful thing he he prayed for us and that was such a blessing he said thank you God thank you father for these two women that are going around and praying for people so we were just like, wow, that, that that's a blessing. Well, I see this thing is up to nine minutes, so I'm going to stop there because um, it's got a limit on Facebook, so I'll probably have to send it to YouTube first. But that was our wonderful day here, and there's probably other people I forgot who we prayed for, but um, that gives you an idea of how what a blessing it is to come to the mall and, uh, and pray for people. Hope you'll join us next time. For now, we say bye. Bye. God bless you.